Well, chaos on Capitol Hill for the first time ever yesterday. The House Speaker was removed from the post by a vote. The effort to oust Kevin McCarthy was spearheaded by Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who accused McCarthy of breaking promises and folding to Democrats. Representative Jerry Carr was in the House yesterday as everything happened. We have him live in our studio with us tonight. Representative Carl, thank you so much for taking time to join us. We know you just got off a plane coming back from Washington, D.C. It, it, it was pure chaos. It was pure chaos. So, Explain to us, uh, help describe exactly what happened yesterday. So uh, yesterday, well, the way it started is Matt Gates filed for uh, weekend suspension of the leader. Mm -hmm. You can do that with one vote. That was voted in nine months ago. We knew it was a mistake then. We knew that would be the Achilles heel of, of, of McCarthy. We didn't know when, we just knew it would happen, and it happened. So he was able, uh, Matt was able to file it, uh, get it on the floor, and of course, another Democrat is going to help that pass. So the, we had to depend on 218 Republican votes, which we fell uh, about six short. Now, that was one of the hangups from the original vote to get him right. in when it took so many times is that that change would be made that it would only take one to, right. to uh, get oust the House. Speaker. So so we're he it did it did pass. He is he was removed. We have a temporary in place, which is Patrick Henry. Uh, it a lot of people should understand what this means is we can't have anything to come to the floor. We can't bring anything to the floor. We can't bring appropriate appropriation packages. There's a lot of things that we need to be moving and bringing to the floor. The same group of people that did that are also holding up our appropriation packages too. So it's a double-edged sword for us. So we're trying to negotiate. I hadn't been home in two weeks, but we've been trying to negotiate getting things moving through appropriations at the same time now that we're going to be debating what, who's going to take Kevin McCarthy's place. Which fortunately, in the Republican Party, we have two very strong leaders that have stepped up. Jim Jordan being one and Steve Scalise being the other. So over the weekend, uh, phones ringing off the hook, they'll be calling, talking to us, trying to get us to vote for them. Uh, Tuesday, uh, we will meet as a uh, group again. Uh, mm -hmm. We will do a vote in private. Uh, we will pick one of the two and then we'll take it to the floor and see if we can get 218 votes. It took a lot just to get McCarthy voted in. Do you think it's going to be that easy this time around? No. We may go 16 rounds. Wow, but we don't, we're, we're, we're almost running against the ticking clock because we're looking at another government, the threat of another government shutdown if we don't have a spending bill passed by this time in November. So we got, we got a 45 day extension. That's one thing McCarthy did negotiate and did a very good job. We got a 45 day extension and that clock's ticking. So we can't work on this package now. Again, the same group of people we can't work on this package getting them to agree on things to get it done within the 45 day period unless we get this ball moving. I've got confidence we're going to get it worked out. Washington DC, I call it I call it drama city for a reason. Everything's got drama attached to it. Those of us have worked on different things. We've we've pushed, we've spent I've been up since three o'clock this morning working on stuff, trying to get uh, some organization to my little area of the world. But I think we'll get it put together. Now, will we make the 45 days? I have no idea, because if we don't make the 45 days, then we go back and have to argue that over again. It just, it's, it's a domino effect of all of it. So it, 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 it's, it's really a struggle within the Republican Party. And everybody says, well, why can't the Republican Party come together? You got 222 uh, uh, A personalities that, that are all very independent. Uh, that's one, that, that separates us from the Democrat Party. Democrat fo Party follows leadership. I mean, they'll follow them off a cliff. They're very organized. They do exactly what they're asked to do. <clears throat> Republicans are not that way. Uh, that's even true in local government. Republicans are more free thinking and, and more independent. So we really fight that in situations like this. You've got Alabama senators now that uh, we've got some sound from them who are calling for unity for the Republican Party in the House. Let's hear what they had to say. So the infighting must stop. Uh, we as Republicans have to work together so that we can work on behalf of the American people. We got to be united. And I, I agree with what President Trump said about Republicans. We need to unite more and more every day. It's hard to lose your coach midway through the season and have anything really worthwhile working for you.
uh, Democrats, are, they're united, and that's a huge advantage. You know, we've got a lot of diversity in our conference, but we need to be united if we want to win. Well, some are saying with this division within the Republican Party that they're losing confidence of a lot of American voters. Well, and I don't blame them. Kevin McCarthy did an incredible job leading this, keeping these people together, keeping them moving in the same direction. We got a lot accomplished in the first nine months. Uh, everyone's focused right now on what we have not got accomplished. We got a package put together that we actually sent over to the Senate. We beat the Senate to it. Senate still has got nothing out of their appropriations. They've got nothing out of their their, their committees. They're, they're shut down uh, basically themselves. Of course, it's a funeral right now, and you know there's, there's a lot of things that add to that. But but you know I got to give McCarthy praise for what McCarthy deserves. McCarthy did an incredible job trying to balance all these personalities. Now we've got to get back to try to get things in somewhat of an organized manner. If we had not voted that one vote could challenge the speaker, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about this. Because if it would have taken 50%, it would have never came up. If it would have taken 25%, it would have never came up. 4% of the total Republican Party in the House is what caused this to happen. 4%. That's all it took. Can that be reversed? It can. And, and will it be done? I don't know. That was something that came up last night. We had, there was a pretty heated conversation after everything was over with. They got us in a conference. It got pretty heated. They closed the conference, told us to come home for the weekend because they anticipate us being locked up for the next couple of weeks trying to get this worked out. But I, I want the voters to understand this is part of the process. This is part of the, the democracy that, at work. It, it may look very, uh, um, it, it looks complicated, it is, but it's, it's democracy at work. It's everybody's opinion that we're trying to come up and bind into one opinion, and that's the way it's supposed to work. It truly is. And you know, the vote you saw where, where the Democrats, uh, several voted with us on the vote, that's the way it's supposed to work. We're not supposed to be one side voting against the other side. We're supposed to be voting on issues the way we see issues the way together, we feel. Getting the country together. moving the way that they need and, to move. And I'm, I was with a handful of Democrats last night on the street walking home, and I, I was chit-chatting with them and, and encouraging them to, you know, let, let's start doing some things together and, and start stop all this one-sided, they're right and we're wrong and back and forth, because that's not going to fix this country. What's going to fix this country is when we start focusing together as one. Exactly. Well, we actually have some sound from some of the Democratic uh, representatives who are in the House talking about what happened yesterday. And um, let's hear from them real quick. This is not a Democratic problem. This is a Republican problem. They supposedly have the majority. They should be able to pick their own speaker. Kevin McCarthy is not trustworthy. Uh, we don't trust him. Their own conference doesn't trust him. Just stepping back and thinking about, like, what do my constituents think of this? They think it's tragic, and they look at the failures that MAGA GOP has put upon us, and they see that although Republicans are the majority party in the House, they're working as an opposition party. They're opposed uh, within themselves, uh, and then they're opposed to just getting things done. Okay, there's also talk, too, in the Democratic Party about trying again to push Hakeem Jeffries as a Speaker of the House. They can do that. They can try to bring that up. Uh, I couldn't think of three worst Democrats to interview, though, just for the record. There's a lot of good Democrats over there. They should have had a chance to express themselves. Those are, those are three that I would not have uh, taken my, any advice from. But, but I, I know, I know you, you, you have to get these bites where you can get them. But it, it'll be all right. We're going to make it through it. It's not the end of the world. It's a struggle. It's what we're sent up there to handle, and that's what we're going to do. We will get it done. Okay, so when will you start voting again? Come next week, Tuesday, Wednesday? So we're, I call it a bed check uh, in football. That's what they call it. They make sure you're in town on, on Friday, uh, excuse me, on Tuesday night. Uh, we'll have a, uh, a, a, a meeting. I'm sorry to say we'd have a vote. We're not going to have a vote on the floor. But they'll make sure we're all in town. We will get, the, the different candidates will have a chance to stand before us and give us their sales pitch you know, why, why they should be leaders, the pros and the cons. Right now they're polling, they're calling all of us, seeing where we stand, where we lean, who we support, and so on and so forth. But we'll get that Tuesday night, and then Wednesday we'll, we'll hopefully we'll bring it to the floor for a vote. If it passes, it passes. If it doesn't, just like with McCarthy, we just keep bringing it up and trying to vote it through. Okay, now again, let's explain to people right now exactly why we're ending it. What happens if a speaker is not voted into place soon? 
Okay, so as long as there's not a speaker in place, there is no business that can be duck conducted on the floor. So there's no laws being written, there's no laws being altered, there's no appropriation bills being passed, there's, there's nothing uh, that would, the normal business of coming on the floor for everyone to vote on, it doesn't happen without a speaker. All right, so hopefully that this process will get through soon. We'll have a new speaker very soon, so then we can work on passing these bills, passing, um, of course, a, a spending budget mm -hmm. for the country and avoid a shutdown of our government. No, we don't need a shutdown. Shutdown does no one no good. I, some people say, well, we ought to shut it down. I'm going, why? Do you want your military to go without pay? Do we want our Coast Guard, our Coasties here to go without a paycheck? I don't. I don't. I have a hard time facing them thinking, uh, you know, that, that, that their families got to figure out how to make ends meet. I, I just don't want to put myself there. It's something none of us want to see. All right, Congressman, thank you so much you. for joining us again. As always, we truly appreciate you taking the time before you even go home to stop by and spend some time with us. My pleasure.